The first time we went in 2005, we were just trying to understand what is the ice sheet doing now. And it just so happened that we visited parts of Greenland that just a few months before we got there had changed in a really big way. Now that we know that changes happened, we have to explain why they happened. And so the last five years, we've been thinking of ideas that might, you know, why would Greenland change so quickly? Of course, as you warm the temperatures in the atmosphere, you cause melting on the surface but, uh, of the ice sheet. But as you warm the atmosphere, you also warm the ocean. It just it takes a longer time. And the ocean comes into contact with the Greenland ice sheet. So if you're warming the ocean, you might also be increasing the rate of submarine melting, melting below the waterline. And we think this is a very important process, but it's, it's invisible to see. Um, and uh, nobody had really made any measurements of, of what is the water temperature uh, in the ocean right next to the ice sheet. So when we were in the last trip with the Arctic sunrise, that's what we wanted to uh, understand in, in more detail. How warm is the temperature of the, of the ocean waters in the fjords, that the Greenland ice sheet? And does the temperature change with time? The first surprise that the water in the, a lot of the water in these fjords is very warm. It's four degrees centigrade. And it's water that we can say comes from the subtropics because it's very salty and it has, and it's warm. You can't get warm, salty water formed in the Arctic. It has to come from somewhere else. So it's coming from the subtropics, from the Gulf of Mexico, taken north to Greenland by the Gulf Stream. But uh, not only do we see that warm water sitting there, but we also see it change very quickly. So one day it will be warm, the next day it might be a little bit cooler, the day after it might be even warmer again. And so that's telling us that there's al almost constant supply of heat being supplied by the ocean to the edge of the Greenland ice sheet. And so that's what we think is, is causing the ice sheet to, to change so fast, that it's caused by melting below the waterline driven by warming oceans. Scientists have been doing an awful lot of work in trying to understand why does climate, why is it the way that it is, and we can explain all these differences. We can say that, okay, back in 125,000 years ago, the way that the, the Earth orbits around the sun was in such a configuration that we'd get so much heat from the sun and it would cause temperatures to be the way they were. That's why Earth goes through an ice age cycle. That's nothing to do with humans, that's to do with the orbit around the sun, and that's explainable. But then you can also say, well, there's other things that affect climate change, and that's the composition of the atmosphere. To the present day, when we say that we're adding greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, we know from basic chemistry that these gases trap heat. So therefore, we can explain why temperatures are going up. If you try and do a computer model of climate the last 200 years of climate, using everything we know about the climate system, you can do a quite a good job of, of making the model match the observed temperatures up until about 200 years ago. And then if you keep running the models, then the models tell you one thing, but the observed temperatures tell you something else. The observed temperatures are much warmer than the model temperatures. The only way you can get the computer models to match the observed temperatures is if you add the effect of greenhouse gases to the atmosphere at the rate that humans have added them. And once you add those effects to the models, then the model and the observations are almost a perfect match. And so there, that's the best evidence to say that the modern climate system is a function of human activities. The fossil fuel industry might complain that they're losing business, but they're not the only business on the planet. Um, there's a lot of, most people will be badly affected by the effects of climate change. Here in Spain, wine industry, agriculture, tourism, people go sit on the beaches. They, you know, people come by the millions to sit on beaches in Spain. Uh, by 2050 or 2100, a lot of these beaches might just be gone.